Can everybody hear me? Okay. Apologies for my voice. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold. So, as Lloyd just said, I'm going to be talking about the ocular manifestations of Fabry disease, also known as Anderson Fabry disease or Fabry's disease. In this talk, I'm going to start by um, describing a case. It's a hypothetical case, but it's very um, illustrative of um, the natural course of the disease. We're going to go over the basics of Fabry disease, e the epidemiology, the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms, um, especially as they pertain to ophthalmologists, and the interventions, um, again, focusing on where the ophthalmologist can come in. So we have a 14-year-old Caucasian male who presents to his family doctor complaining of occasional tingling of his hands and feet, at times progressing to uh, moderate pain. On physical exam, they note 40 to 50 small, dark red-blue macules on the lower abdomen, buttocks, scrotum, and thighs. Some simple laboratory tests come back normal. He returns several years later uh, for just a regular physical. He has the same peripheral neuropathy, but also occasional abdominal pain and diarrhea. On physical exam, more macules are noted. Uh, they send some more labs. Everything comes back normal, except the UA demonstrated some mild proteinuria. We'll jump forward to age 22. Our patient was hospitalized with swelling of his hands, feet, and around his eyes. He was told that his kidney function uh, was at about 50%, and an eye exam by the internist demonstrated cloudy corneas. Uh, further workup went on, and at uh, age 23, finally a kidney biopsy was done. Uh, they sh there were light microscopic changes, included glomerular, interstitial, and um, vascular disease. And on electron microscope, you could see inclusions in the podocytes and the endothelial cells and the mesangial cells within the lysosomes. They sent a lab for alpha-galactosidase A, and the activity of that enzyme was markedly low at 11.9, thus diagnosing him with Faber disease. He went on, by age 40, he was on dialysis, um, had a stroke at age 50, and died at 55. So this case, it's uh, very classic in terms of the timeline. The average length of time between first presentation of symptoms and um, diagnosis is about nine years. It's easily missed. So this patient presented at 14, and by 23, finally was diagnosed. Some basics on Faber disease, it's a rare lysosomal storage disease caused by a deficiency in the alpha-galactosidase A activity, or alpha-gal-A. Uh, it causes a deposition of globotriacylceramide, or GL3, in the cells, causing endothelial dysfunction. The onset is in adolescence and leads to periodic acroparesthesias, which are the pains and tingling in the hands and feet, angiokeratomas in a bathing suit pattern, also um, hypohydrosis or anhydrosis, or lack of sweating, and characteristic corneal and lenticular opacities, which we'll go into later, in addition to proteinuria. These patients usually die um, of end-stage renal disease, average age of 41, unless dialysis is started. If dialysis is begun, then um, you get cerebrovascular accidents, um, heart disease, and um, eventual death, usually in the fifth decade. It's an X-linked recessive disease, so it um, affects males mostly, but due to lionization, females can also have um, display a range of um, severity in the disease. Population-based studies um, have shown that worldwide uh, it's, it's seen in about 1 in 80,000 to 1 in 117,000. However, a recent paper um, in Italy found that the incidence, um, just looking at newborn screening of the um, alpha-gal-A enzyme activity, 
it was low in 1 in 3100. And however, the um, predominance was toward the non-classic type of Fabry disease. And so those would be people who have a cardiac or renal variant. So they lack um, the classic findings of the acroparesthesias, the young uh, childhood or adolescent onset, angiokeratomas, hypohidrosis, and the corneal and lenticular opacities. It's thought that actually um, a larger proportion than um, was originally thought uh, of patients that have end-stage renal disease in their, between their 60s and 80s may actually have um, this non-classic renal or cardiac variant of the um, Fabry disease. The mutation in the GLA gene on the X chromosome, as I mentioned, causes a deficiency in the alpha-gal A enzyme, leading to the deposition of GL3 within the lysosomes. And you can see in um, this electron microscopy image, this is endothelial, an endothelial cell, um, sorry, a glomerular epithelial cell. Um, and all of these, they're called zebra bodies. These are the lysosomes that have been filled with the GL3 um, material. This is just the pathway that the um, glycosphingolipid uh, metabolism um, follows. So if you're missing the alpha-gal A enzyme here, you can see you develop Fabry disease. If it's lower down on the pathway, um, you can develop Gaucher's disease. The GL3 material deposits um, large, well, it deposits in all the cells of the body, but it causes the most dysfunction within endothelial cells. So you have, as I mentioned, kidney problems. Um, in, the, in the heart, you can get cardiomyopathy in addition to ischemic events, uh, cerebrovascular accidents in the brain. Uh, in the peripheral nervous system, you get the acroparesthesias. In the GI tract, you get, um, due to deposition within the blood vessels and the nerves, um, bouts of diarrhea and abdominal pain, and in the skin, the angiokeratomas and anhydrosis. And we'll talk about the angiokeratomas a little bit more. So it follows this classic pattern, bathing suit pattern. Um, the name that was given to it is angiokeratoma corporis diffusum. This isn't used so much by um, general doctors, but the dermatologists like it. And you can see they're um, small punctate. Um, sometimes they coalesce into a uh, larger group, like you can see on the hip here. Um, ocular signs, this is probably why we're here. We're looking for the um, corneal verticillata, which is an epithelial deposition of the GL3 in a whirl-like pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. The whirl generally centers just below the axis of vision um, and spirals until it's linear um, as you move outward. This is actually a very common finding. It's seen in um, between 70 and 90% of patients with Fabry disease. However, it's not completely specific. The most common uh, medications that are quoted they also cause this type of corneal verticillata, or amiodarone and chloroquine, but uh, quinacrine, chlorpromazine, indomethacin, clofazamine, suramin, naproxen, and tilarone also can produce a similar finding on the corneal surface. Another ocular sign is um, conjunctival vessel abnormalities. So you can see the tortuosity of this vessel here. Um, they can also um, become uh, aneurysmal and fold over themselves, bulging outward. Here you can see the classic lenticular opacities. This um, cataract on the right side, this is the classic Fabry cataract, and it's a posterior cataract, stellate or spoke-like in appearance. However, this is only seen in between 10 and 20% of um, Fabry patients. This is much more common. This is an anterior cataract. Um, both are caused by deposition of the um, GL3 material. And the vessel tortuosity can also be seen um, on the fundus. Um, can be seen with 
uh, using an ophthalmoscope, but more dramatically seen using um, fluorescein angiography. So you can see the tortuosity of the vessels in the superior and inferior arcades. The vessel tortuosity has um, some prognostic uh, value as well. So um, you can see that patients that had the vessel tortuosity in this study um, had a high, this is, on this side, this is the Fabry outcome scale of the maze symptom severity index. Um, so the folks that had vessel tortuosity um, had more severe presentation of the disease than those that um, did not have vessel tortuosity, and that was statistically significant. Even more um, significant, perhaps, is that um, vessel tortuosity is also associated strongly with um, cardiac size. So this was um, looking at the thickness of the, um, of the left ventricle as a marker for cardiomyopathy. So most importantly for ophthalmologists is that the ocular presentation is much earlier than the rest of the problem. So um, if a doctor were to pick up the, um, the corneal signs especially, which can present as young as three years old, you could get the patient started, intervene, and prevent potentially um, many of the problems that will show up later in life. Interventions that um, we have now, which are relatively new, Fabrizyme and uh, Replegal. Uh, Fabrizyme has been, um, that's FDA app approved in the US. Uh, Replegal is um, used in Europe along with Fabrizyme. Um, there were several studies on Fabrizyme in the past decade since it was um, released. The first one here by Eng in 2001, this was, um, this is actually the stage four, st um, when they were trying to get the drug approved, stage four trials. Uh, they found that um, when they looked at the um, microvascular endothelial deposits of GL3, it actually was cleared um, within six months in 20 of the 29 patients that were um, in the treatment group and none of the patients who were in the placebo group. Beck et al. in 2004 was able to demonstrate that um, the uh, renal dis ki kidney disease that um, the patients were um, suffering from stabilized once they were put on Fabrizyme. Um, and then Hughes et al. demonstrated that um, the cardiomyopathy actually reversed and um, the heart, the left ventricular mass actually decreased as measured by MRI. So in summary, um, Fabry disease is an X-linked recessive deficiency in the um, alpha-gal-A activity. If you see cornea verticillata and you see angiokeratomas in a bathing suit pattern, you can practically make the diagnosis. And finally, um, early diagnosis and intervention, uh, frequently by an ophthalmologist, could set a patient on a course um, with you know, less, mor less morbidity and increased quality of life and possibly increased lifespans, though um, the medications haven't been out long enough to uh, be able to show that yet. Special thanks to Alicia and Cannon for helping me out on this. And these are my references. Are there any questions? Sure. Um, urinary findings usually show up in the adolescent years as mild proteinuria and gradually, um, gradually increase heading toward end-stage renal disease by the um, third or fourth decade. Um, in terms of the, like the UA findings, um, it's going, well, I don't want to, I know that the proteinuria is usually out of proportion to the azotemia, um, so the patients are relatively compensated until, um, until the end, but um, I couldn't tell you exact figures, I'm sorry. And are there any specific tests that you can get um, in the 
There are also, um, I'm, well, I know that they can find the, um, the Maltese cross um, lipid um, findings, but um, that's not specific. I'm not sure if there are specific urinary tests. Generally, when they want to do the confirmatory diagnosis, they'll just go straight for the alpha-gal-A activity. Hmm. No, uh, no visual symptoms at all. Um, so it would take a pretty astute uh, clinician to send them off to the ophthalmologist. Yes? Mm -hmm. For the acti yes, that's a that's a so that you can test the blood. Tears are frequently checked as well, um, and um, and then also um, well not frequently, but you can also go for um, uh, a mutation analysis. That's another way to make the diagnosis. All right. Thank you very much.